Alright guys, it is Ghost, and since a lot of you guys requested some tips on perk builds for PvP, I thought I would share what I have spent hours and hours fiddling with and studying and learning what I can about. Um, big special thanks to Happy Slap from Reddit, who actually loaded the Fallout 76 files into a Fallout 4 editor, allowing him to look at some of the perk, um, how some of the perks work, and actually discovered some interesting effects on some of the perks that aren't actually listed on the cards so it kind of changes what ones are good for pvp and which ones are bad for pvp so i'm using the nukes and dragons uh, character builder fantastic i'm going to link this uh, skeleton build because these are the perks that i think are absolutely the most useful ones for pvp these are in my ranking system s rank perks they are going to be useful for any kind of PvP build, regardless of what weapon you want to specialize in. Um, and so you kind of want to start with this and then build off. Now I'm going to go through each one of these perks, and then I'm going to go through every single perk and say, you know, this is an S rank. This is every single build should have this. It's A rank. If your build is, you know, focused on shotguns, you should have this shotgun perk. Um, B ranks are going to be good perks to just fill in, you know, extra points and gaps that you have from your stats. And then, you know, C rank down to F rank. F rank should be never, ever, ever taken for PvP because it just doesn't work. Um, some things to note. Strength will influence your carry weight. So these are just what the base stats do. Carry weight, and it also gives you a tiny bonus to your melee damage. Perception. Perception will give you better chances to hit in VATS. So if you have a VATS heavy build, that's good. It also allows you to detect people who are sneaking. So that is going to be... A, um, probably something possibly, depending on the, how the meta evolves, a counterpoint to the sneak builds and stealth builds if they ever add a PvP server. The problem is with the slap system where you have to agree to hit, yeah, like they have to hit you and you have to hit them, there's no point in sneaking um, because, you know, they're aware that you're there. It could be useful for revenge or collecting bounties though, so, you know, it's not completely out of it. But perception will allow you to detect people who are sneaking a little bit better. Um, however, there is currently a bug where if they're crouching, they can be crouching in front of you, and it still counts as them sneaking for the bonus damage, even if you see them and their blip shows up for you. So, I'm yeah, hoping that gets ironed out. Um, endurance. This is kind of a big stat for PvP because, you know, your base HP is 250 HP, and every point you... Actually, wait, hold on. What is the base HP? I think I might be wrong. No, 250 is the base HP. Um, and then the perks you get are, let me make sure I put these S rank ones back in, but the perks you get every time you put another point in here, you get another 5 HP. Um, obviously having more total HP is going to make you last longer in a fight. Um, charisma, having every time you have a number divisible by 3. If you have 3 points, you can share a rank 1 perk with your entire team. Very, very important if you're in team play to make sure you have something useful. Like, you can have something as simple as Tenderizer shared across the whole team. This is still an AS rank perk, but if you only have it at one star, your target, every time anyone in your entire party hits somebody, they whoever got they hit takes 5% more damage for 5 seconds after the attack. I'll go in more on how that card works. It's actually way better than it says. Um, but having a really powerful perk like that shared among your entire team is really, really big. And you can actually, if you want to build for a lot more charisma on your PvP build, you can do some really cool things for your team. Um, intelligence. This one is more for crafting durability. Doesn't play a huge role in PvP. Um, if you want to craft every weapon, you need 5 points in it. But if you're doing a PvP build, this is kind of a dump stat. Um, you can have somebody else or another alt character that you have do the crafting, and you can kind of neglect it. Um, agility, more action points. If you have a VAT-heavy build or a sprinting build where you're, like, you know, sprinting around with a melee weapon. Very important for that stat. And then luck is how many hits it takes to get you to a critical hit. Critical hits are guaranteed hits in VATs, assuming you have a 1% chance to actually hit. So you can't, like, melee from a mile away. You actually have to get, you know into range for that critical hit to go off but they are guaranteed to hit they do extra damage and they can be decisive in fights um the more luck you have the fewer hits it takes so i believe i don't have the full breakdown there's a list somewhere but at 15 luck every three hits charges your critical meter to full 
And then the fourth hit is the crit. So it becomes really, really potent later on when you're doing every fourth hit as a crit. Um, but yeah, let's start talking about the S-rank perks. So first off, Traveling Pharmacy. So this is stim packs and all your chems are reduced by 30%. Now a lot of people like immediately when they were looking at perks think, oh, okay, a really good weight-based perk is pack rat so you can carry more junk. And it's, you know, it's a useful perk because if you're killing people in PvP, you're taking their junk. But a lot of people are going to PvP without junk. Whereas you're always going to have healing stuff on you. So Traveling Pharmacy, you can even have this up to three. So it's 30, 60, and 90%. Every stim pack's a pound. So now this is 0.7. 0.4 and 0.1 so you can carry a lot of healing into your battles and that'll help you last longer and survive longer because you're not running out of healing in your pvp concentrated fire this is the perception perk the only one in perception that i'd consider a absolute must have s rank perk because every time you use vats in the same charge of vats if you hit the same person and the same limb, you get more accuracy every single shot, and you get a damage buff. So this is super critical for anyone doing any kind of a VATS build and stuff like that, because now your VATS is even stronger every hit. I think it's like a 5% extra damage buff, but it, it's not a huge one, but it's the accuracy is really nice. Because if they're moving around a lot or you're slightly out of the optimal range, you're getting like 10% better accuracy to hit every time you take a shot in VATS. Um, if you're not using a lot of vats, it's still useful, even if you're doing melee. The ability to target limbs is also huge, because you can aim for headshots in vats. And so you just sit there and you just take a revolver, or a, you know, a 44 or something, you pop six shots out in your vats charge, or whatever you can get, and you're going to be doing a lot of damage. Even if you miss those early shots, they still boost the accuracy and boost the damage of the future shots in that vats charge. So Concentrated Fire is huge. I would put it up to three star but at least have it at one star. Like, this is if you're not putting any points into Perception in your build, put at least a one star and equip this perk. Um, endurance, I really, really wanted to make a um, my melee builds have 15 Endurance, because when you're at 15 Endurance, you have potentially up to 365. It comes out to about 400 HP with the proper perks and stuff like that. Um... And so I really wanted to put a bunch of points into this, but the problem is a lot of the point the perks in Endurance are kind of shit. They're like you don't get a disease from food or, you know, disease from enemies or, you know, cuts down your rads. Or they offer like minor passive health regens during the day or night. They're not great. These two perks, however, are fantastic. So Life Giver. So normally you get every point in Endurance you put in gives you 5 HP. Life Giver gives you 15 per point in its rank. Well, actually a little bit less, because it's an actual four-point card. So you're getting seven and a half, ten points of health per rank, and 11.25 health per point in there. But you're also getting the base five extra health, and then this health on top of it. So it puts you up to, with just the uh, six endurance that I suggest, up to two, 320 HP. Base is 250, so you're already about 25% harder to kill than the average person. Now, Rejuvenated. You're like, that's a really stupid perk. You just said, like, food and rad perks and stuff like that aren't good ones to have for PvP. Why is the Rejuvenated a good perk? Because if you are well-fed, you get plus 25 HP. Just without a perk. Just if you have your, like, I think it's 75% or better fill on your food bar, you gain plus 25 HP. That is huge. That is a 10% extra HP, even at one endurance, just for having your food bar filled. At one rank of this, you now gain 37 HP. At two ranks, it's 50 HP. So you can basically get a 20% bonus to your HP for two skill points. That is the biggest health gain you're going to get in a single skill. The other benefit from this is the well hydrated is an AP regeneration. So your action points will come back faster, you'll get to use more VATs, you'll get to sprint more, you get a plus 50 with the full rank of this perk AP regeneration bonus if you play a musical instrument you can get another 25 um, for an hour if you play a musical instrument for a minute um, if you sleep in a bed remember that's also a 5% experience buff which is great for leveling up so that's why rejuvenated is the probably the number one most underrated perk that is absolutely fantastic so actually with this you'd have a 370 HP compared to someone's normal 250 
So you are already 50% harder to kill just with these six, these two perks. Charisma. Stimpaks and Radaway will work much more quickly. The Radaway one, it doesn't really matter much. But the Stimpaks working much more quickly, the faster you heal, the more health you actually have rather than that temporary slowly filling health bar, which lets you take more hits and survive longer. Pretty standard 2.1 you want to take. Tenderizer. This perk is amazing. So this is a one that uh, Happy Slap looked into and actually realized how good it is. So the ranks up, you get slightly more damage and for a longer time period. Now, the longer time period may or may not be worth it. Um, well, actually, it's worth it quite a bit. But, I mean, as long as you have the rank 1, if you don't want to spend the extra points, the rank 1 is perfect. So what it is, is every time you hit in that 5 seconds, the target receives 5% more damage for that period. And so if you hit them twice, it's 5% more damage, and then 5% more, and 5% more. So it's a stacking buff. It may not be you know, 5 and 10% more. So if you hit them 5 times, it's not plus 25% damage. It might be, you know, like 10 damage or something with the multiplicative. I'm not 100% certain which way it goes, but it is very, very good. Um, actually, let me just quickly... Yeah, so it seems like the cap is on the time. No, no, it actually is actually a additive stack. So, sorry, I don't, didn't mean to confuse you guys. So if you hit them five times in five seconds, they're taking 25% more damage. You put that up to 7% for 10 seconds, you have an automatic weapon kind of a thing. It's going to stack, and they're going to take a lot of extra damage. And if this is the perk you share with your team, every time anyone hits anybody, tons more damage. So that one, at least at level one, is going to give you a huge advantage. That's a, the biggest bang for your buck, but you actually get pretty good you know, bang for three star there. First aid, int is pretty useless. Like the vast majority of these perks, I mean, sure you can have some where your guns will slow down or your fusion core will last a little bit longer. First aid is if you are using this as a dump stat and you only have one point to put in, 15% more health from stim pack, absolutely a fantastic perk to have. Um, it's good if you're alone. It's good if you're in a party. Um, so under... Agility, obviously, action boy, action girl. You'd want as many points in this as you can, because 45% faster, that's more sprinting, more use of vats. Um, adrenaline. This one, even a single point in this, is huge. So every time you get a kill, you get plus 6% up to 6 stacks of extra damage, just straight off the top. This is in addition to your weapon perks. So if you have your weapon-specific perks, you can get plus 60% damage. This is a multiplier. So it is not just 66% damage, but it's 6% damage off of the base 100, and then 6% of your bonus 60% damage. So you'd have like 7 or 8 damage. And every time you get a kill, it resets the duration. So if you can keep chaining kills and getting kills like this, you can sit there and at full rank, you can maintain a plus 60% which multiplies on top of your thing. So if you have a 1.6 damage multiplier, because you have all of your weapon-specific type perks, you now get 60% more of that 160%, which means you're getting somewhere on the order of 230 to 250 total percent damage compared to normal. Huge perk. Born Survivor. This is a general survivability perk there are armor pieces that actually do the same thing, but this is basically a legendary effect that may proc independently. So this one's this one's an S rank, but it might be, if you have the right armor perks, it might be redundant. But um, I would recommend having this up all the way to 3, because if every time you're below 40% health, you get to use a stim pack. And then if it, you last for 20 seconds and don't get all the way killed, and that, you know, that stim pack, which now heals more and heals faster, keeps you alive, you can proc again and get another stim pack, you know, in 20 seconds without having to do anything. So you can keep shooting rather than having to hit H for fast heal or, you know, use anything like that. Um, and this also has some good synergy with the serendipity perk if you're not wearing power armor because there's a really specific combination there. Mysterious Savior. This one is another one that uh, Happy Slap found out the data on because it says will occasionally, frequently, and regularly appear. So this is 20% of the time when you are downed, the Mysterious Stranger will revive you. 
one point into luck gets you up for a second life, which I think you get only like partial HP back, but you can come back when someone thinks you're dead and get back up and then shoot them and down them 20% of the time for one point, 30%, 40%. So one point, 100% worth it. It's up to you if you have the extra points to bring it all the way up. But you can be, if half the time when the enemy downs you, you just get back up and there doesn't seem to be a cooldown, this is a huge perk. Bloody Mess, this one is a straight damage multiplier. 15% bonus damage. And so it'll multiply with Adrenaline as well. And with your weapon perk. So you get 250% with a max Adrenaline stack. Well, now you got 15% more. So that would be another potentially 30. So you're almost, you might be getting up close to 300% of you know, base weapon damage if this is maxed and this is maxed. This one, highly recommend 3x. Works with all of your perks and it's a multiplier. Works with all weapons. Um, there's also a, I think it's a 5, 10, and 15% chance to make nearby enemies explode. Um, I think that's more PvE focused. I don't think that'd probably be applying in PvP, but who knows if it, you know, insta-kills somebody nearby randomly at a low percentage rate. You know, not too bad. And then starts genes. I put this one in because PvP, if you're going to optimize yourself for PvP, you are going to find the good mutations. There are mutations that give you extra damage resistance just for cost of a little bit of AP. There are ones that give you more strength, more melee damage, more perception, more luck. Actually, maybe there might not be one that gives you more luck. But the this will allow you to custom pick the mutation set you want and lock it in. And there's actually apparently a vendor that will sell you syringes where you can just take whatever mutations you want and apply them to yourself. You want to be able to jump twice as or three times as high as a normal person, you can get the uh, marsupial mutation, which would actually be really good for PvP. Because you could jump over people's heads but still aim down, they're going to have a hard time tracking you. Lots of cool synergy there. That's why I almost guarantee this is going to want to be in your main build. Alright, so now that we looked at the S rank perks... And I've kind of explained how each of those work. Now let's look at the perks that are the rest of these trees and which ones I recommend. So basically every single, well not every single weapon type, but most weapon types have a set of perks like Gladiator, uh, where's the next one, Expert Gladiator, and Master Gladiator. So basically the way these work, the first point in gets you plus 10% more damage. These ones do not multiply to each other, these just add together. So if you have Gladiator rank 1 and Expert Gladiator rank 1, that's plus 20% total extra damage, not 21% because you're not getting 10% of the 10%. But so the first point to these cards is the most valuable. So you take rank 1, rank 1, and rank 1, and you get plus 30% for 3 points. 30% more damage for 3 perk points. Now, each time you put another point into these, you only get 5% bonus. So if you go to max on them, it takes 9 total points to get the full 25, or the full 60% um, bonus damage, but it takes 9 points. So I, if you like a weapon, I, you definitely want to take at least the first rank of all three. Um, and then if you have the points to spare, putting more points into the Gladiator, it doesn't matter which one, if you put it into the Expert or the low rank or the Master, it all ends up being the same. But the more you get that percentage up, the more adrenaline and bloody mess can multiply. So very, very big there. So obviously if you're doing one-handed weapons, take Gladiator, Iron Fist if you're punching, Slugger if you're doing that. Pack Rat, it's not a bad one. I would say this is probably, so these are all A rank perks. If they are specific to your build, take them. They are fantastic perks. Pack Rat, I would say, is probably a B rank perk. It's not a bad one to fill in. Like, if you have extra spare points that you're not doing anything with in your strength, it's a pretty good perk to take. It will reduce the weight of junk items, let you loot your enemies more, that kind of a thing. Um, shotgun is also in the strength tree, so if you like shotguns, this is a perk to take. Gun Bashing. It has some cripple chance, but gun bashing is much less damage to do, I think, other than with shotguns because you're in close range. I would put this as a C rank. If you're very, very specific, this might be okay, because crippling would be kind of cool. But I would generally not apply that. Armor weighs less than normal. This is good if you are trying. You are running a very low um, carry weight set, and you need to shave off some pounds. 
You're always going to be wearing your armor, so it's always going to be applied. That's why I like the pharmacies. You're always going to have the health, but you if you die, you lose your junk. So pack rat becomes useless when you die, which is why that's only a B rank perk. I would say probably Sturdy Frame is B rank as well. It's useful if you find a certain situation, but only in that case. Um, if you are running a non-power armor build, Barbarian is the single best perk in the game for damage resist when you're not in power armor. If you go 15 strength, this gives you 80 damage resist, which is the equivalent of like a full set of lightweight uh, combat armor, I think. Might be just, might be like heavy metal armor, but... It basically adds a ton of damage resist if you're not running around in power armor. Martial Artist. This is an A-rank perk if you are melee class. 30% faster swing, 30% more damage. It's, you know, pretty standard there. Like, the less time you it takes you to swing, the faster you can get the next swing around. Scattershot. If you're doing a shotgun build, this is an A-rank perk for you. They weigh a ton less, and a shotgun can weigh 15 to 20 pounds. And that's a lot of your carry weight. And the 30% faster reload makes the double barrel shotguns and ones that take a long time to reload much, much better. Um, blocker. This one may actually be... I, I'm going to consider this one either a B or an A rank. This might be a useful one to fill in extra points with, but if melee is really, really strong against PvE, so a lot of people may just adapt their melee builds to do PvP. If you're seeing a lot of people rushing you with melee, this straight up halves their, well, almost halves their damage. This is going to be huge. It doesn't have a condition, doesn't require you to have a melee weapon out, it's just, you just take 45% less damage. So that would be a great counter to um, enemy melee users, but once again, it depends on how the meta evolves. If melee is not a big thing, then this perk is going to be, you know, C or D rank, but it could be A or B depending. If you yourself are doing melee, it's maybe not a bad one to put some extra points into, because it means you're, if you're up close and personal, you're taking less damage from other melee people. Um, Bandolier, being able to make your ballistic weapon ammo weigh a lot less. I would say this is probably a C rank perk if you've got the extra points to spare. Um, if you're doing a heavy weapons gun build and you have like a ton of minigun ammo, this might actually start making a difference if you have just loads of ammo on you. But for the most part, ammo weight is fairly minimal. Um... These are more of those. Extra carry weight. This is probably a C or D rank perk. Um, it's nice if you, you know, have some points to fill in so you can carry a little bit more ammo and stuff, but not a huge gain there. You can put pockets on your armor or something to give you a little bit more there. Um, Ordnance Express, making your explosive weigh a lot less. This one's really good if you're going with a heavy explosive uh, build. Um, if you're doing melee and doing power armor melee, the uh, full charge, it's probably a C rank perk. It's useful to have very less drain on your fusion core. But fusion cores last, unless they change this when they full release, fusion cores last a good long while, even if you're using vats and running a lot heavily. So if you always have a couple of them on you, you're probably not going to run out in a melee or in a PvP engagement. Incisor. This one. This one is, if you are in a melee one, this is like A to S rank if you're doing a melee build because you can ignore 75% of your target's armor. They are in an XO1 suit. It now treats it like a raider power armor kind of defense suit. Very, very big if you're in a melee build. Um, obviously, heavy guns weighing less. This is really good if you're in a heavy gun build because you're likely to have a minigun, a rocket launcher, you know, if you can make all of these different things weigh 90% less, you can have like five or six mini nuke launcher. You can have a lot of different types. Faster reload on heavy guns. If you're doing a heavy gun perk, B or C rank. It's not a necessity one, but I mean, being able to reload faster, especially if you're using rockets and stuff, probably pretty good. I would almost say that most people doing heavy guns would like shoot a rocket and then instead of reloading, switch to a mini gun or a Gatling weapon. So that's why it's only like a B rank. Um, bullet shield. Damage resistance while firing a heavy gun. Terrible perk. This is probably D rank. If you really have the points to spare and you are dedicated to a heavy gun build, it might be okay. But the damage resistance gain only works while you're firing. And so, I mean, if you're focused on miniguns, sure. If you're focused on rocket launchers, no. Because it's only while, like, it's only a narrow window where you're actually firing with that. It's not while reloading or anything. So if you're doing Gatling weapons maybe a B rank perk. 
Um, being able to sprint into people and stagger them with power armor. Maybe if you're doing a power armor melee build, this would be a pretty good one. Um, so it, I think it just increases the damage with the different ranks. So maybe put a point into it. Being able to stagger people will prevent them from shooting at you for a little while. Um, and that looks like everything for the strength set. For perception. So if you go, the perception tree is the one if you're looking to do automatic rifles or sniper rifles or, you know, non-automatics. Um, so combat rifles, those kind of things fall in here. Also, laser rifles, if you have the long stock and they classify themselves as rifles, they fall under these perks. Butcher's Bounty, that's just searching an animal, that's PvE stuff, that's F rank. Green Thumb, reef twice as much harvesting went flora, F rank, because it's not PvP related at all. Um, lock picking, F rank, but I mean, obviously you probably want at least one point of these on your character. Um, so you can actually do PvE stuff, but you don't want them in your PvP build. So that's F rank for PvP, but, you know, S rank for pretty much all gameplay PvE. Um, ah, crack shot is under here. All right, so if you're doing a pistol build, which most perks actually fall under adrenaline, crack shot is more accuracy and range when sighted. So better accuracy, I think, also translates into vats. So maybe not a bad one to have add in if you have a pistol build. Obviously, A rank on all the damage perks for non-automatic um, and whatnot. Skeet shooter, this one I am actually not certain on. I would say probably a B or C rank perk if you are doing shotguns. Improved accuracy and spread. Actually, okay, maybe A rank if you're doing shotguns, but I wouldn't maybe put three points into it. It'll tighten up your cone of fire, is what I assume this is what it does, um, and give you a little bit better chance to hit in vats. But it doesn't give you any, it's just accuracy. And it might give you a little bit of damage because of the spread, but I don't see it as a huge must-have. Obviously hearing audio and in range of magazines, that's F rank because that's just PvE. Um, ignoring Armor of Insects, um, that's F rank, because you're not fighting insects, you're fighting players. Um, though it should be noted that there are weapons that do specific extra damage to players, and there's armor that gives you damage resistance percentages off from players. But that's a whole other separate video talking about pow legendary armor effects and stuff. Uh, Perceptive Bobble, obviously, another F rank, because that's PvE finding things. Having your automatic light rifles reload up to 30% faster and have excellent hip fire accuracy. Hip fire accuracy also affects VATS accuracy. Um, because VATS works off of hip fire rather than sighted accuracy, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but it's not going to hurt you with VATS. Um, that's probably an A rank if you're on automatic rifles. Um, again, another directional audio perk. Extra inter and perception, but this is only half of the day. It could give you a little bit of extra accuracy in VATS, but I'd probably put this down as a C rank perk. Like, if you have extra points, maybe throw it in, but if you don't, then it's not worth it. Um, awareness. This one is a 50-50. This one would be, if they ever add perk decks, where you can swap in or out a set of perks, a good one to have immediately, because you can scan through a target battlefield, be like, oh crap, that guy has the highest armor, so he's the one we have to worry about the most. He's going to live the longest. That guy is the weak one. We can pick him off quick. Useful to have, like, this would be great on a sniper person who can give callouts to your team. You know, oh, you're using energy weapons. That guy has the best energy resistance, but he's weak to ballistic. Have the minigun guy shoot him and the Gatling laser guy shoot someone else. Useful for one person as a strategist. Probably an A rank perk there. B rank or C rank if not. Because, I mean, it doesn't give you any extra damage, it just lets you know what they're weak to. Um, sniper, obviously, being able to have less sway, really, really good, because long range shots are gonna be kinda hard to hit. So probably A rank perk if you're a sniper. Tank killer, this one is huge. This doesn't care if it's an automatic rifle or a sniper rifle. You can ignore up to 36% of their armor and a 9% chance to stagger. So you can have your enemies stumbling around by shooting them. This would be really powerful on automatics, um, because it, I think it's per bullet procking. But being able to ignore that armor means their, their you know, power armor suit gets downgraded a rank or two in quality just because you're ignoring some of the armor. And it's a percentage reduction in armor. So the more they have, the more you ignore. 
Um, Refractor getting some energy resistance. If you're going for a anti-energy or no power armor build, this will be good unless, of course, uh, energy weapons become huge. Because this one doesn't require you to not be wearing power armor, whereas most other damage resistance perks say without power armor. This one will be good if you are, if like energy weapons are somehow like 10 times better than normal weapons and that's all you see in PvP. Otherwise, probably D rank perk. Glowing enemies. Humans won't be glowing, so F rank. Bigger explosion radius. This one is great if you are doing grenade launchers. This will also apply to grenades. There's also a perk where when you die, you drop an um, active grenade. If you only have Nuka Cola grenades or Nuka Quantum grenades in your inventory, you drop one of those. So twice the radius and extra damage perks on explosives, that would be huge for that kind of a build. If you want to, you know, troll people when you die. Um, more range and ac excellent accuracy when sighted. This is good for snipers, so that'd be an A rank for them. I'd say maybe because it requires them to have a sight on them but i it might work with a reflex sight so this might be also a good one if you're an automatic rifle person fire in the hole if you're liking if you like to use grenades and stuff like that pick one point um you can make you can throw up to 50 percent farther but 15 percent is fine having the throwing arc will allow you to lob around over barricades lob around trees and stuff and be way more precise one point if you're doing anything explosive with thrown explosives, this is throwing weapons too. This counts for throwing knives and tomahawks. Having that throwing arc is going to be huge. That's an A-rank perk if you're doing anything thrown. Um, Lockpicking, more general things. Gain night vision while sneaking. If you're doing sneaking, this will make it a little bit easier to see people. Um, good for hunting bounties, maybe? I'd say B or C-rank perk just in general because it's only at night. I mean, you obviously don't want night vision in the day, but, you know, it could be situationally useful. Penetrator is not a confirmed one, but having no accuracy penalty if they're hiding behind cover. That one will be an A rank if it exists, but it might not, because people have not found it on their perk trees. Whew, this is a lot of perks going through these one by one. I do thank you for staying with me for the whole part of this video. Um, so what we got next is Endurance. So like I said, <laughs> Life Giver and Rejuvenated, those are like the only two really good perks in this tree. Less radiation from eating and drinking, it's minimal while you're going to be eating and drinking in combat. Having extra thirst quenched by a drink, not really that good. So these are all F rank. Um, less chance for disease, F rank. You can disease cure easily enough and it's less likely to happen while you're eating in combat. Less chance of disease, terrible, terrible perks. Dog food. Three times more beneficial? I'd say it's a C-rank perk. Dog food doesn't expire, so you and it, you'll get it fairly commonly. So you can actually use this as your go-to food in combat, and this will make it that much better. And you can actually heal, I think, 75 HP off of a can of dog food with this perk. So C-rank because it, it's not really a big priority, but could be useful. Disease resistance from the environment, that's dumb. Chems generate less thirst. I mean, just drink another water bottle. Not a big deal. Nuka-Cola products are now up two and three times as beneficial if you're using Quantums or Nuka-Colas to replenish your AP. Say you're doing a high VATS build. Possibly a good one to get. For most people, probably C rank or lower. Um, not super useful. Cannibal, this one's a fun one because when you down someone, you can just eat their corpse. It's kind of, you know, Fallout's version of teabagging. Um... Basically, you don't really get much extra out of more than one point, but if you want to have that little bit of, oh, look, I'm eating your friend's corpse, fear me, and demoralization, one point. Probably a C rank perk. Uh, Crit really likes this one. Vaccinated, useless. Um, chems, induce less hunger, that's useless. Gradual health regeneration while in camp or workshop. These, depending on if you're planning on doing a lot of, it says workshop. So if you're planning on doing workshop work, this will help you recover health and save on medicine and stuff while you're defending your workshops. I think you'll probably have to be out of combat for this to actually kick in. So it might not be like super, super useful, but probably a C rank perk, you know, pick up a level rank or two of it. So that way you can just heal up without wasting any of your stim packs. Um, adamantium skeleton, reducing limb damage and eliminating it. 
What this is, is this is the limb specific damage, the picture of the Pip Boy where it has little bars over each of your limbs. This is how much it takes to cripple them. So at tier 3, you cannot have limbs crippled. But you still take 100% of all of the damage points that go into that limb. So it's not like your head is now immune to headshots. You will still take full headshot damage. They just can't break your head and give you the, you know, you're stumbling around because you have a broken leg, or your gun sways more because you have a broken arm, or the, your vision blurs because you have a broken head. Popping a stim pack instantly fixes those. So probably not a perk to spend stuff on unless limb damage becomes a huge PvP thing. Probably C rank. Solar powered. Extra strength and endurance during the day. If you're going with a heavy strength build, this gives you a little bit of extra melee damage. And it gives you a bit of extra HP during the day only. I, I'm i not a huge fan of the day and night perks. I wouldn't put them into a final build just because if you have PvP at night, this you're just wasting points. But, you know, probably a B rank perk. It's situational, but it could be useful for dump points. And, I mean, there's a lot of dump points if you go max endurance to max your health. So, you might include that. Um, chems last up to 100% longer. So, the difference is, and a lot of people, a lot of people do not know this. You can have one chem active at a time. You take Psycho buff, and then you take Psycho itself. The Psycho replaces it. So, you only can have one stat from a chem. You can have a bunch of stat buffs from food, though, stacking, but only one chem at a time. This will make those last longer, but honestly, for three perk points, just pop another one, have it bound to your Hot Wheel. Um, and then when your effect wears off, you just take it again. Um, Aqua Boy, no longer take rad damage from swimming and breathe underwater. Situationally useful. This is probably a B rank, because if you want to ambush somebody from a river or their base is in a highly irradiated water area, you might actually come out ahead there, but only B rank. Um, you can't actually fire guns while swimming, so it's not like you're going to be able to hide under water and use that as cover. Um, fireproof? Honestly, this is only Molotovs and the Flamer you're protecting yourself against. It's pretty much useless. I don't know if plus 60 fire resistance will mean you don't take any damage from them. But this one is at best D rank, unless Flamers are like the go-to weapon. Ironclad, this is fantastic perk if you're not wearing power armor, because this is the most damage resistance per perk point. Um, and basically, this these perks, the ones that give you the damage resistance while not wearing power armor, you have to spend about 17 or 20 of your perk points to get all of them. But I've done the math, and it's potentially possible you have more damage resistance than an X01 suit not wearing power armor. So, and if the, the, the whole, whole build thing hinges upon if power armor drops in legendary variants, so you can get extra bonus buffs, ironclad is going to be useless because why not just wear power armor and get legendary effects on that? But if you can have five legendary effects on five different pieces of body armor, like each, so that's 25 total legendary effects, and you can get even more damage resistance... You might be better off late game. Like, I'm going to... Actually, my alternate character is going for a non-power armor max damage resistance build. Um, and so this is a key component for that. Other than that, if you're using power armor, this is a worthless perk because it doesn't give you any benefit outside, inside power armor. Um, Nocturnal Fortitude. You get extra health at night. Again, probably a B rank perk if you got the extra points. I mean, it's extra health. It's useful in PvP but only at night. So basically what you can do is I would say maybe invest two points. And so you'll get, with the extra two endurance, you'll get 10 extra HP at the during the day and 40 at night and just swap these cards out day or night. Might not be a terrible thing. Probably a B rank perk. Um, gain extra bonus damage for two minutes when a player revives you. I thought this was going to be a really big perk. I was going to build it into my main build. The issue is... You can only be revived if you get downed, but not killed. Um, maybe if you're sniping, because you likely have the sniping from behind cover, and you have a fellow sniper, this is, you know, 50% bonus damage, which will be a multiplier on top of Bloody Mess, on top of Adrenaline, on top of your basic weapon bonuses. This could be devastating, 
But all they have to do is hit you with one more bullet, and then you die, and you don't get this bonus. And it also is a player revive. It doesn't count for the Mysterious Stranger revive. Um, Rad Resistance. Rads, I don't think there actually even is the Child of Ad Children of Adam uh, radiation gun in this. So I don't think much is actually going to do it. There's the Radium Rifle, but I don't feel like radiation damage is going to be huge in PvP, considering this is less than what base Raider power armor would give you. Like, this is less than what I think the frame gives you for radiation resistance, so. Radiation regenerates health. This is pretty terrible because it's actively taking radiation damage to regenerate health damage. Useless in PvP. Radicool. So this one, if you have 100 to 190 rads, gives you plus 2 strength. 190 to 280, plus 3. 280 to 370, plus 4 strength and 370 to 460 plus 5 strength. So I don't I don't know exactly how I think that's about a third of your bar filled to get max strength bonus. If you're running a heavy strength build, this could be good if you're willing to sacrifice a third of your health for five more strength. It will give you more damage power, it'll give you more carry weight. Um it does have some anti synergy. There's a lot of perks where people can revive you and wipe your rads. So you have to be a little careful of that, but you know, this is probably a B rank perk. Might be a good one for your build. And you only need moderate radiation to get a plus two strength bonus out of this. The problem is it looks like it's I mean you might get just plus one strength just for putting a point in endurance. So if you have a waste point and you want more strength, that might work. It might, however, require the hundred threshold to get plus one or plus two strength, and there's no plus one variant, so. And that's another one thanks to Happy Slap who figured out the two to four, five strength ranks um, requirements for that. Um, no chance to get addicted to alcohol if you're using a strength build or something that uses alcohol, especially like the Party Boy where you get double the effects from it. Maybe an okay one, but it's three points, so. Honestly, the addict all or anti-addiction um, stuff is probably just easier to use. Um, I've used a lot of, like, random alcohol and chems just to see during the betas. Didn't really get addicted to anything, so I think that's a pretty low chance. Um, chem resistance. Again, if you're using a heavy chem build, you only get one effect at a time, so probably wasted perks. I would say these two are D ranks. Um, suffering less from hunger and thirst. I would put this up to B only for the fact that if you co it combos well with rejuvenated, if you have the points to spare. But otherwise, this is probably a pretty crappy one. Um, slowly regenerate radiation damage is another day-night perk thing. Um, unfortunately, the more expensive one is solar-powered, whereas this one is, you know... Actually, no, I guess health regen, yeah. There, there, there's some combinations if you use the day-night cycle thing with all of these. I'd say B rank. I mean, a little bit of passive regen when you're outside of battle saves you some supplies, but probably not a main build. All right, Charisma. So before I go into full the Charisma, like I said before, it's every three points you get to share a perk star. So with this base build, you can share Tenderizer rank one with everybody. If you put Tenderizer if this up to three and get your Charisma all the way up to six, you can share Field Surgeon with everybody. That kind of a thing in your party. Only really a good perk um, type if you are in a party, although Tenderizer is good even if you're solo. And if you're solo, Lone Wanderer is good. Inspirational, this is great for PvE stuff. You don't get a lot of experience for PvP. Um, and it's not really, like, I would put this on if you're doing PvE stuff, but PvP, it's wasted points. Um, less Hunger and Thirst when a workshop, that's probably C rank. So, Lone Wanderer, this is an S rank perk if you are alone, because it gives you 20% damage resistance. Just, if they do 100 damage, you're only going to see 80 of it actually applied to your armor before all that stuff. And it's basically two points into Action Boy or Girl for free as well. Takes four points, but it's really, really good. Um, I would say this is probably an A-rank perk for bodyguards. Um, this is obviously, it's useless if you're in a group. Um, Bodyguards, it gives you extra damage resist, and this one doesn't specify that you don't have to have power armor. So it's extra... Maybe 10% damage resist, um, but it does consume 4 points. This one, I'd say like A rank, it really depends situationally if that extra damage resistance makes a difference for you. 
It's great if you're doing the non-power armor build because 36 damage resistance is the equivalent of the base, like, um, leather armor set entirely, again. Hard bargain, obviously PvE, so that's an F rank. Players, you revive, come back with health regen. If you're planning on being a team medic, the Charisma Tree has a lot of cool stuff. The Field Surgeon with stim packs doing more stuff for you. Uh, debuffs like the Tenderizer. This could be good for you. 60 seconds of health regen and high health regen. If you revive somebody, they could be devastating. But for most people, like I said, the revive is not a common thing to have happen. Blood packs no longer radiate. Greatly satisfy thirst and heal more. This is possibly one to get. Um, blood packs are very, very common. And they might be a good, you know, quick heal food and drink item. Like you combine dog food and blood packs, and that takes care of your water and food while in combat to keep up your rejuvenated. And this one gives you quite a bit of healing. Potential option. I'd say maybe B rank. A rank if you're planning on carrying around blood packs. Magnetic personality. This one is if you need to be able to give higher rank perks to everybody and are in a team, this is a fantastic perk. So the way it works is you don't get to equip extra cards. This is a charisma base buff. What you can do is, so let's say I've got tier 3 standardizer and tier 2 field surgeon. I put 6 points in. I take Magnetic Personality 1 to fill that extra point in. I'm now functioning in a team of 4 at 9 Charisma. So I can actually share Tier 3 Tenderizer with the entire team. Every time every person on the team takes hits, they, they, they can do this kind of thing. Or I could share Tier 3 Bloody Mess and everybody on my team just does 15% more damage. And that's only costing me 6 Charisma rather than 9 because of Magnetic Personality. Now, say you want to share a life giver with everybody. You take two points in this, and maybe like one point less in Tenderizer. So six points now turns into 12. You now have the ability to share a four star or a four cost perk with the entire team. This one is one people are going to be passing up, and they're going to be like, oh, magnetic personality, that seems stupid. Who needs more charisma? I want endurance. I want strength. It lets you save your perk points in your build but get the benefits of Charisma. This is actually, like, my main character is actually going to be a mod... I think I'm going to go 9 um, Intel or nine Charisma, but then I can share up to rank 5 with a 2-star of this, because 9 plus 6 gives you the 15. Um, I don't actually... I'm not going to be running any 5-star perks on it, but if you had, say... Actually, no, I would be. If, like, you could share a max rank Adrenaline with 9 Charisma, so you don't have to go to 15. So there's really no reason ever to go to beyond 9 Charisma unless you need that for the cards. Very, very underrated card. Very highly rated. I would say this is A, possibly S-Class. The only reason I don't give it S-Class is if it doesn't work if you're solo. Um, Happy-go-lucky. If you're an alcohol person, you can get up to 3 extra luck. That will cut down the number of shots per crit. Very, very big if you're under the influence of alcohol a lot in battle. Um, also a good thing if you go like, you know, two points of this and then magnetic personality as your charisma perks. You know, if you only have three points into charisma, could be good in that build. Injector, you get extra 5, 12, 18 action point regen for 10 minutes. Probably trash. I'd say this is D rank because you get plus 25 for just being well hydrated. So at three point cost and requiring a revive, it's super weak. I mean, it could be really good in combination where if you give them high health regen and extra AP regen, sure, could be useful. Um, there's also Quack Surgeon, which lets you revive people with the liquor. Um, I don't know if that actually applies the liquor effect so that then they would get their luck increased if they had happy-go-lucky. So you could share happy-go-lucky with your charisma heal them with liquor, and then give them even more luck, too. Like, you can build a reviver build, but there's not much that, like, all the enemy has to do is put two extra bullets into them or something, and they drop dead, and they don't get revived. Team Medic. This is an A-rank, S-rank perk. Basically, it would be S-rank if you're in a team. I would say only one star on this one, because you don't want to spend a lot of points in Charisma, because not a lot of people are going to put it in for PvP. 
But at one point, every time you stim pack, including when uh, Born Survivor procs and stim packs you, all your teammates get some extra health if they're within, I think it's within the battlefield range. I don't think it's across the entire world map. Um, and then if you have your first aid giving you more health, I don't think it gives, I think it's normal strength means it's unbuffed and unmodified by first aid, but this one is going to be a really good one if you run in a team, because every time they heal, like this one, if you share it, every time they heal, you heal, every time you heal, they heal, if you're focusing on stim pack based healing. So A rank, S rank perk there. Uh, effects of alcohol are doubled or tripled. Again, if you if they have the Dirty Wastelander in and you're going with a strength build, this is really, really good. Combine that with Happy Go Lucky. If you are not looking at an alcohol build, again, obviously not a good perk. Travel Agent, pay less caps when fast traveling. I'd hope for this one out of a perk pack and then just swatch, swap it on and off if, as you teleport. Um, be useful for getting to the battlefield. Healing Hands, player you revive, you revive are cured of all rads. I would say this is an F rank perk, only for the fact that if people are running the perks where the more rads they have, the more strength they get, you've just screwed them over. And also, like, their rads aren't really going to be that big of a deal. I mean, this might be useful if you are doing PvP inside highly irradiated zones, because it acts as extra rad away. I would say D rank or F rank, though. Um, Animal Friend, this is only for wild animals, and it's only pacify. If this was in sight, so you can have, like, a Yao Guai or, you know, Death Claw army following you around, and you can control them and command them to attack, it'd be good. But this is just, they ignore you. It's pretty terrible. That's F rank. Um, rads increase your chance to inflict 50 rads with melee attack or 25 rads. This one is another one that uh, Happy Slap did some research on. I'm trying to look up the exact numbers on it. Don't have them in front of me. I'm, I apologize. Basically, if you are doing melee damage and are planning on having rads, you could do some extra rad damage to enemies. Like, it might make you more efficient. It'd be a good use of points if you have spare ones and you're doing a melee attack build. I'd say B rank. It's not a vital must-have if you're doing a melee, but it could be cool. Um, disease cures, cure teammates, F rank, that's useless in combat. Unless there's something that gives diseases that players can shoot at you. Um, you generate health after reviving another player. It's only for a few seconds. It's much, much worse than uh, the other one. But if you're doing a revive build, it could be useful. I'd say B rank, only if, you know, better if you're doing the reviving build. Um, running faster when part of a team, good if you are doing melee builds. Um, it's just straight up 20% damp faster speed. No extra AP cost or anything like that. Philanthropist, restoring health and food. Unless you're being like a team eater, where you basically are keeping everybody's um, rejuvenated buffs going. I'd say skip it. Suppressor. This is one of, the, one of those ones. So for two seconds, every time you hit the enemy, they reduce their damage output by 30%. It's a very, very narrow window, so you're not going to be able to stack this one as much as Tenderizer. But if you have an automatic weapon, this one could be pretty good, because if you can, like, for if you had a minigun you're constantly reducing the enemy by 30% damage. Could be pretty useful. And with a minigun, you may actually get more stack than just 30%. So probably A rank if you're running some automatic weapon or minigun, B or C rank otherwise. But it could, you know, save your life by a little bit. Strange in numbers. Only good if you're using mutations. Only good if you're using, you know, if you have teammates. 25% stronger, only on the positive things. It's not bad. Like, you get, uh, there's a perk that gives you 100 energy resistance. Um, and this would make it 125 energy resistance. And, I mean, it's 25% bonus stronger ones for a single point. I'd rank this A rank. Um, most builds should have a mutation if you're running the starch genes. Like I said, if you don't like mutations, then obviously it's not going to be one you want. Uh, when inflicted by rads, pyrrhic like heal 80 rads on your red team bites. This one would be good if you're PvPing in highly radiated areas, if that becomes a very big thing late game. But like I said, it has some anti-synergy with the rad-based perks for strength and stuff like that, where people might want rads. So work that out with your team. 
And if you're solo, it's useless. Teammates hit by your flame weapons regen even more health. So there are two flame weapons that I know of. There's an SMG that's unique that shoots flaming bullets. And the flamer slash napalmer style uh, heavy weapon would be interesting because you can just spray over your teammates. They'll heal and you be a you'll be able to damage enemies close up. And if you're using a flamer, you're probably pretty close to enemies anyway, so this would be a good in combination. I'd say probably B or C rank, but but good in combination with uh, teammates who do melee. Um, aim your gun at a creature below your level for a chance to pacify. So this one would work. These ones work for animals. This one works for probably scorched. Pretty terrible for PvP. Um, outlaw bounty timer is reduced. Honestly, PvP with a bounty is kind of dumb. They can hit you for full damage, you can't hit them, and you only get bounties if you're killing people who are not wanting to fight back, so... Or if you're stealing from people. Honestly, even if this was confirmed, I'd say probably wouldn't run it. Um, I think it is up to five hours, so this would, if it's 60% reduction, would take that down to two hours bounty timer. So, I mean, you know, if you, if this actually exists and you really do a lot of stealing, it might be worth it, but for the most part... Yeah, no. Um, I'm pretty sure perk cards are always shared and are permanent. I don't think I, they have a duration, so I think this one is just going to be dropped. This was just a leftover thing in the files they data mined. And having more radiation resistance while mutated, this is a really shitty card. I wouldn't take it even if it did exist. Int. These ones are easy. Basically... If you have, so most people will put five points in int, because at five points in int, you can do all of the crafting of all of the specific things. How you spend those five points, honestly, if you have five points in int and you're not doing a zero in, or a one int character, three points in first aid, two points in maybe guns breaking less or power armor breaks more slowly or something. Most of the stuff is pretty crap. Um, all of it deals with crafting, so it doesn't even come into effect. There is, however, explosive extra damage, so if you're doing an explosive build, that's good for you. <laughs> if you want to specialize in pipe weapons, you know, that's good for you. Less um, guns break slower. Honestly, late game, you're probably going to have some people who can do the repair. There is a perk where you can repair power armor to 200%, repair weapons to 200%. So breaking them slower... It's not going to be a huge issue. Carry two guns, and you can save yourself five perk points. Um, you're not going to be scrapping in battle. not going to be crafting in battle. not going to be lockpicking in battle. Um, Wrecking Ball. This one might be a useful one if you are sieging people's workshops, because you can do up to 120% bonus damage to turrets and walls. That could be a useful um, use of a few extra points. I still think the first aid gives you more survivability, but, you know, if you're using five points for, uh, five points for being able to craft everything in the game with your character and making them a generally useful character and not relying on a crafter in your party, um, you can get up to 80% extra damage just stacking that on top, so it's always an option there. Oops, um... Let's see, get double quantity when you craft chems, chem build, that's good for, you know, that. Um, power armor, you can, so this is a big, so that's the other thing. Okay, so entry's not worthless. Entry is good if you're in power armor. Um, it lets you have your power armor decay less. If you're doing heavy gun power armor, which is a pretty specific build, you get excellent accuracy and you ignore 45% armor. This one will let you chew through people. This one will absolutely devastate with a minigun against power armor. It's kind of a little specific, though, but if it's useful in your build, put it in. Um, that'd also be good use of your five points. Uh, armor breaks more slowly. That's another thing you could put a point or two in. Nerd Rage, it's only active below 20% health. So if you're in this base build, you'll have 370 HP. So 20% health is, let's me do this math in my head, about 80-ish, 70-ish. So you're in a very narrow window to get the little bit of extra damage resist. You do get 25% more damage in AP regen, so it could keep you alive at low health. It does have some synergy with Born Survivor and stuff like that, but like I said, I'd say get Born Survivor up to 3. 
Um, so, you know, you can do this with three points. Potential use of your int points. Um, hacking robots, that's not going to be important. That's robots. It doesn't say sentries or anything like that, so you can't use that in workshops. Reducing the weight of your power armor. If you're doing a power armor build, maybe it's useful. Honestly, you're probably going to have at least enough strength to carry your own power armor just from the frames buff, so not a big one. Your fusion cores will now last 30, 60, double. Honestly, fusion cores can be generated if you hold a workshop. They're three pounds each and stuff like that, so maybe if you're trying to shave some weight, but honestly, that's pretty crap perk. Like, you can get away with very low investment in int, if, even if you were using a heavy, arm, uh, heavy gun power armor build. Um, and then crafting these things or repairing things are not going to be important in PvP. I mean, making it cheaper to repair if you're trying to rebuild your turrets, but this is not a confirmed card, so I wouldn't count on it. Oh, we've been going for almost an hour and I'm still not done with all the specials. This is insane. All right, so Gunrunner. Um, or so, all the agility perk tree. So the more points you put in this, the more action points. This is vital for VAT's build. You'll usually have a lot of spare points in here to stick on good things. Um, so, extra speed while having a pistol equipped. I mean, if you're in a pistol build, sure. That's an A rank for you, pretty much low for everyone else. Extra damage and energy resistance while sprinting outside of power armor. I would classify this as an F perk. It only works while you're running around. Um, I mean, maybe it'd be useful for you if you're a melee build and trying to close the distance. Uh, food and drink weights can be reduced by 90%. Useful if you're using food and drink as a major way of healing. Um, these can actually get quite heavy in your inventory, but probably not a real great perk in PvP. Um, Dead Man Sprinting F rank. You sprint 20% 20 20 faster. Woo, you get 20% movement speed here for two points, and you don't have increased AP cost or the requirement your health be low. Pretty shit perk. There are better ones. Um, sprinting consumes less action points. Putting two points into this makes sprinting cost 30% less. It would be better than dead man sprinting. You're a little bit faster, but you can't sprint as far to get behind cover, so not very good. Sneak attacks with melee weapons. Because there's that current bug where you can crouch right in front of somebody and still count it as sneak attack, um, potentially useful. Other than that, probably not unless you're going a very sneaky build, but, I mean, this could be... Potentially more super powerful because you get an extra multiplier, so you can get up to 3x. And then if you add that onto a crit hit while you're sneaking, you can get up to 6x. Like, you can get a lot of damage stacked up. You can pretty much one-shot people. But because the slap thing, you're not going to be engaged in combat with a person unless you're in a workshop or some kind of PvP dedicated thing. Um, maybe the Hunter Hunted mode, this would be useful. Um, evasive, if you're doing the no power armor thing, this would be a good way to do it for high damage resist. Otherwise, it's pretty shit per points. Um, not really a great sink. Um, chance to cripple limbs with pistols. It's only 4%, but, I mean, it's the only way to cripple with pistols for just a straight-up chance to do 100% limb damage. Um, harder to detect while sneaking. If you're being sneaky, good for that build. Um, craft and disarm better traps and craft better and expert turrets. Excellent one if you're building a PvP base or trying to raid people's bases and disarm their traps. Um, probably not a standard build in a gunfight, though. Uh, range sneak attacks. Once again, because you can crouch and, you know, still get the sneak attack for your first hit. You can do a lot of damage with a sniper rifle with this if you're not in a situation where the slap system comes into play. Enforcer, this is an absolutely vital perk if you are using shotguns. 15% chance to stagger, 30% chance to cripple a limb. You have an automatic shotgun, and that person has broken arms, broken legs, and blurry vision very quickly. Um, and they're also stumbling around like an idiot. Less damage from falling. Yeah, probably not a good PvP perk. Um, I'm pretty certain even with the, like, enhanced marsupial, you don't take fall dam like, it lessens your fall damage. Um, so this is probably not a useful one, use to the points. Producing more rounds, that's great when you're preparing for PvP, but not when you're in PvP. Running no longer affects stealth. 
This one will be ridiculous in a stealth build if you are playing Hunter vs. Hunted, because you can just run around the map and it'll act like you're crouching. Maybe. I wonder why it says running. Like, it doesn't say, like, not being crouched no longer affects stealth, so maybe not. Um, extra silenced weapons at night do extra sneak damage. If you really want to build in for the sneak multiplier, that's a good card. Otherwise, pretty crap. Never, while well, sneaking, never trigger trip mines or floor based traps. It doesn't mean anything about wall based traps. It doesn't mean you're dodging turrets. But if people are putting a lot of floor based, like mines and stuff, you can sneak through a minefield around someone's base. Armor breaks more slowly and is cheaper to repair. That's. Wow, I don't remember this perk, but um, that's a weird one to have in agility. It's an okay perk. Um, most armor has enough condition to last a PvP fight, so might be useful for repairs afterwards, but I wouldn't put it in your active build. Dodgy. Now, this one is really dependent. I would say dodgy is really, really good if you're a sniper. Because being able to just straight up have a 100 damage shot do 70 damage for only costing you 30 action points is great at long range. If you are close range or fighting somebody with automatic pistol, your AP pool is gone, or AP automatic weapon of any sort. Your AP pool will be completely drained. You won't be able to run. You won't be able to use vats. This is a high risk, high reward. I would say this is probably a D rank perk just because you can get screwed depending on the enemy's build. I would rather you have perks where it's you know, buffing your damage resistance or something, because that works in general against automatic or non-automatic. Stealth boys can last four times as long. If you are using stealth boys to sneak around in Hunter vs. Hunted, you are going to be a god among men. So, if you're doing a sneak build, that's a perk to grab. Gunfu, that swaps target on kill, 10% damage to your next target. So this is 10, 10, and 10. 10, 20, 20, 10, 20, 30. Potentially very, very powerful if you have a build and weapons designed to get a lot of shots off that will still kill in vats. I'd say one point is worth it for the 10% damage buff, but the odds of getting three targets in a clip, even with maxed agility action points, probably pretty low, but one point is good. Now, luck. This is useful if you are doing a crit-based build. So, first off, the searching extra containers to find more stuff, you have to push an extra button to research the container. It's a separate thing than just take all to make these work. These are not ones you'd want in a PvP build, but good for getting supplies for PvP. Serendipity. This is another one that Happy Slap has done some looking at. This one has a hidden text to it. It does not tell you, but this does not work if you're in power armor. If you are playing with power armor, do not take Serendipity. It will do nothing for you. This is an amazing perk if you're doing the no power armor, high damage resistance perk build, because this one does combo with the Born Survivor, because it'll make you really, really hard to kill. You will basically dodge half of the bullets when below 30% health, letting you sit into the sweet spot where Born Survivor will auto stim pack you and keep you alive, much, much longer. Your last 30% of your health bar is going to be murder for people to get through. Um, and there are a lot of perks you can stack on top of this for armor where you get even more damage resistance when at low health. You can live at that 30% health or below pool for a long time, but only without power armor. Um, spoiling food, yeah, it's pretty crap. You can have canned food that just never spoils. Junk Shield, this is another one that uh, is no power armor, and it's another one that Happy Slap on Reddit did a bunch of research in. The way it works is you re it requires 15, 30, and 45 pieces of armor. Well, actually, no, it it, you get the max effect, I think it's a smooth curve, up to 45 pieces of junk. Now, this can be 45 pieces of steel, which weigh like a couple pounds at most. And you can get the maximum 30 damage resistance here. Issues. If you die in PvP, you drop your junk. This perk becomes useless after your first death. It's also... I mean, it's still 30% damage resistance, but it requires you to have the junk on you. You don't get extra scaling with the junk. This one would be an A-rank perk, if you're doing the no power armor build. 
but it is the worst out of all of the junk perks. And luck is really, really good category. Like on my luck build always had, or my builds always have 15 luck because I just want a little bit of everything in here because it's all good. So it's a real tough call on junk shield. Luckily, the fact that uh, Happy Slab did figure out that you could just have 45 pieces of steel scrap on you, and that counts as the junk shield's full damage. It's not too bad. You you can deal with that. Uh, mystery meats. Impacts can give you food. I would not put this in a PvP build. Might be good for generating a you know common stack of food that you can use instead of hunting in PvE, but not PvP. Slight chance your weapon will repair itself. So the way this works, um, the amount repaired, this is another thing Happy Slap found, is you can get 25, 50%, or 75% durability gain on the repair, but it seems to be a constant like 1% proc rate. So it's very rarely going to repair. The more points you put in, the bigger the repair is. Probably a useless one, because like I said, your weapons should have, if you're doing serious PvP, 200% base durability to start with, and they should last through the encounters. Um, cap collector is useless for PvP, wood collecting is useless for PvP. Doubling your benefits of bag ba battle heads and magazines. They last an hour. I think the magazines might be 15, 25 minutes. I don't know. I've never actually found a magazine in-game yet. Doubling the effects for a point? Honestly, if you have a whole bunch of them, you're popping them, throw on Curator and just enjoy every second of them. But they are consumables and they're kind of hard to find, so probably not a useful perk in all cases. Psychopath. Every kill in VATS has a 5% chance to refill your critical meter. Bad perk. Requires a kill in VATS. Um, there are much better perks, and it'll only refill your critical meter. This is... Maybe good if you are running a low luck VATS build where it takes a lot of hits to fill a critical. But if you're really going VATS seriously, it's not a good one. Um, I'll show you better perks in later in the tree. Um, dry Nurse, 50% chance to keep your stim pack when you revive another player. Good if you're doing that revive build. Um, keeps your med supplies up a little bit. Otherwise, pretty much useless. Um... This one runs the same as weapons, except this is your armor when you take a hit. So weapons when you shoot an enemy. So this is actually a really good one if you're shooting a minigun. Um, because it's 100 bullets in, you'll get a repair percent. Um, but still, it's, like I said, the durability shouldn't be much of a factor. Mysterious Stranger shows up in VATS. I think it is... Let's see, I do know that... Okay, so this one, Happy Slap figured out, is dependent on whether you're using automatic or non-automatic weapons. If you're using an automatic weapon, it's shot-by-shot -shot basis, so you get less percent chance when automatic, but you usually get more hits per VATS chunk in an automatic. So it is 4, 7, and 10% chance on a non-automatic weapon for the Mysterious Stranger to appear, and a 3, 5, 7 for an automatic. Mysterious Stranger usually does a good chunk of damage in past games. I never summoned him because I never got to level 26 in the betas, so I don't know if that's actually a good one for extra damage, but if you're doing a heavy VATS build, having him show up 10% of the time, you're going to do more damage. It's just a straight-up damage buff. Free damage. Last Laugh. This is a good one if you're doing explosives or thrown weapons build. It will drop a live grenade from your inventory. I don't know if it's randomly selected or if it's selected based on most or least damaging. But if you're only carrying re the same type of grenade, then you're guaranteed to drop that type of grenade on death. It drops from your inventory, so it does consume it. But you can kill people with this if they run in to grab your loot. And that'll be just hilarious. Um, four Leaf Clover. Each hit in Vance has a chance to fill your critical meter. It's a lower percent chance than Psychopath, but it's per hit in Vance. I usually find this one to be a much better one because, say, they have power armor and they're taking 1% damage per bullet. This one will give you crits. This one will never proc. One Gun Army. If you're a heavy gun user, 100% take this perk. 12% chance to stagger, 12% chance to cripple. This is going to be godly. Honestly, with all these perks, with crippling and staggering, the Adamantine Skeleton might not be such a bad perk to take to keep you from having crippling issues. But like I said, a stim pack alone can heal you, so maybe not. 
Any kill in Vats has a 15% chance to restore action points. 15, 25, 35. Honestly, if you're doing a lot of Vats and you're doing like rifle Vats build, you will get kills in Vats. And restoring all your AP means you can go back and do a whole nother clip of Vats. Probably one point in this. Um, Storm Chaser, regeneration during rain or rad storms, they're rare weather conditions. It's terrible. Um, Tormentor, if you are running a sniper build or an automatic rifle build, 15% chance of crippling a limb. Vital perk. Ricochet, no PvP, F rank. It literally says on the card you can't use this in PvP. Or it's useless in PvP. Um, chance to reload your clip, or reload when your clip is empty, up to 20% chance-ish, 18%. Unless you are only using weapons that take ages to reload. Like, that's only one in every five reloads you get an instant reload. It's not likely to save your life in a situation. Um... Only thing I could really say this one would be good for taking is if you are doing a double barrel shotgun build. But there are other perks um, for reloading shotguns. Honestly, not a best one, but yeah, you can fill some points in. Critical Savvy. So basically, Critical Banker, where you can store extra critical hits, is not confirmed. Pretty certain it's not going to be in because imagine going into PvP with five stored crits. You would be a god. Critical Savvy lets you get a kind of that same effect. So at full rank, your critical hits only consume 55% of the critical meter. Um, someone did some math on the Reddit, and I really apologize that I cannot remember who it was. But basically, if you're running a 15 luck build, consuming 55% of your critical meter means it's a three-shot cycle. Non-crit, non-crit, crit. Non-crit, non-crit, crit because of this extra thing. So it does save you a little bit if you're going for a lot of critical hits. If you're not going for a critical hit-based build, this perk probably won't help you much because it's only a little bit of savings. But that, even if you're going a low luck build, that might be one or two shots between, uh, one or two less shots it takes to charge a critical. Very, very potent at high luck, though. Negative effect of your mutations are reduced if they're an issue. A lot of the time, you'll just plan around having, and you don't get them removed completely. So a lot of the time, your mutations are going to have downsides that you're okay with living with. So you might not need this. If your particular build has some things where there's anti-synergy, you can get, you know, squeak out a little bit better performance by doing this. It's not a terrible waste of luck points, especially if you're not big into bats. That's criticals. This, if you feel, like I said, critical savvy, better criticals. You can get 40% more damage per critical. If you're doing that every three shots, that is a big damage increase. Super duper. Whenever you craft anything, 30% chance to get double results. Great one for crafting, not good in combat. And that is every single perk known from level 1 to level 50. Why you should take it or why you shouldn't take it for PvP. And so remember, if you are taking a specific weapon, like you want assault rifles or pistols, make sure you pick up at least rank 1 of the respective percentage perks. Rank Go up to rank 3 if you want to go absolute max, but usually only the plus 10% is good. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. I apologize that this took an hour and 20 minutes to go through every single perk, but I wanted to discuss all of them with as much knowledge and information I have on them currently. You guys enjoyed listening to me ramble on about perk builds. I will do more videos. I will come up with whatever kind of crazy build. Like, you give me something funny. Like, I do a grenade drop on death build, and I'll kind of build something around that. Or, you know, an actual viable build. I can show off my uh, max damage resistance build that I think will be better than power armor, but only late, late game once you can farm legendary gear. Um... Whatever you want, put it down in the comments below. Let me know if you want to see build stuff, and I can do more of these. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed. Leave a like, um, share this with your friends, you know, hopefully teach them something, you know. Make everyone better at PvP so people will PvP more. I want to PvP against people. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.